Today we're going to be talking about lesson 5-3, which is on inequalities in one triangle. Now, just to recap our definition of inequality, it says that if you have some value of A and B, where A is greater than B, then there's some other C such that A is equal to B plus C. So, for example, if I have 5, which is equal to 2 plus 3, then 5 is greater than 2, and 5 is greater than 3. Now, there's a couple different properties that's true with inequalities in real numbers. There's the comparison property that says if A is less than B, A is equal to B, or A is greater than B. Okay? It's got to be one of those things. It's either less than, greater than, or equal to. Then there's the transitive property. We've talked about this a little bit before. If A is less than B, and B is less than C, then it has to be true that A is less than C. It's also the other way around. If A is greater than B, B is greater than C, then A has to be greater than C. There's the addition property that says if A is greater than B, then some value of C, if you're adding to both sides, it still remains greater than. And if A is less than, A plus C is less than, B plus C. And same with subtraction. Okay. Now this comes into play when we start talking about triangles a little bit. So theorem 5a is called the exterior angle inequality. And what it says is that this exterior angle, angle 1, has to be greater than angle A, and it has to be greater than angle B. So now let's use the exterior angle inequality theorem to answer a couple questions. So first, it says the measures less than the measure of angle 7. So here's angle 7. So if that's angle 7 right there, it's remote interior angles are going to be angle 5 and angle 4. So for sure we know that the measure of angle 7 is going to be greater than the measure of angle 5 and the measure of angle 7 is going to be greater than the measure of angle 4. What we can also see is that the measure of angle 7 is also a remote angle to the whole thing. So if that's the case, angle 1 has to be less than angle 7, and this whole thing, angle 2 and 4, well we already know that 4 is less than angle 7, so it also means that the measure of angle 7 is also going to be greater than the measure of angle 2 because of that inequality theorem. Remember we said that if A is greater than B plus C, A is greater than B and A is greater than C. So 7 is greater than 2 and 4 together. It has to be greater than 4 and it has to be greater than just B. Now, the next one, part B. Part B says find all the measures of angles that are greater than the measure of angle 6. So what I want to look at is here is 6. So I want to try and find all the exterior angles away from angle 6. So if I'm looking at this triangle right here that measure, six is, measure of angle 6 is in, what are the exterior angles around it that it's uh, away from? Well, the first one we see is measure of angle 3. So that means the measure of angle 3 is going to be greater than the measure of angle 6. If I also look at this triangle, exterior angle 8, is outside of the green triangle. So that would mean the measure of angle 8 is greater than the measure of angle 6. All right. So the angle side inequality. So what we're going to do now is now we can look at sides based on our inequality theorem. So it says, notice that the longest side and the largest angle of ABC are opposite each other, and then notice that the shortest side and the smallest angle are also across from each other. That's going to help us with what we're talking about next. All right, so angle side relationships in triangles. It says that if I have this side right here, and that measures 9, and I have another side that measures 7, it would be true that angle Z is going to be bigger than angle X because the sides across from them are going to be 
bigger than one another. We can also do the opposite. If we see that this angle K is 45 degrees and this angle J is 110, it would have to be true that JL is going to be shorter than LK. And if you look at the triangle, it pretty much shows that. Here's a proof of angle, excuse me, of theorem 5-9. You don't have to go over it, but it's there in your notes if you need to look back at it to prove that those are correct. So let's look at this one right here. It says, list all the angles of PQR in order from smallest to largest. So I'm looking from smallest to largest. So that means what I want to look at first is the sides and order them from smallest to largest, and then we can use the angles that correspond to them. So the smallest side then is PR, so its angle across from it would be angle Q. So angle Q is going to be the smallest angle. The next biggest side is side PQ, so its angle across would be angle R. And then finally the longest side is RQ, and so the angle corresponding to RQ would be angle P. So they're in order from smallest to largest. First we look at the sides, then we can go to the angles. Here's a guided practice problem. Feel free to stop the video and try this one in your notes. So now we can find the side lengths based on our angles. Now if I look right here in triangle FGH, I want to order the sides from shortest to longest again. To do that, we only know two of the angles. The nice thing is, is that in a triangle, we know what they all have to add up to. So, because they all have to add up to 180 degrees, to find angle F, I'm going to subtract the angle measures that I do know from that. So I take 180 minus 45 and minus 56. And when I do that, I find that angle F is going to be 79 degrees. Okay? So now I know all three sides, so I can find out the sides that excuse me, it's all three angles, so now I can find the sides that correspond to them. The shortest or the smallest angle is angle G, so the side across from it is going to be side FH. So the shortest side is FH. The next biggest angle is angle H. The side corresponding to it is GF. And the largest angle is angle F that we found, 79 degrees. Its corresponding side is GH. So now our sides are in order from shortest to longest. Here's our guided practice problem. Feel free to stop and try this one. Notice in this one, angle Y is 90 degrees. 